Imagine that you've just logged into your AMC account and your heart is racing in anticipation as you click on view scores. Your eyes quickly scan the screen for the green line at the bottom of the page showing the MCAT total. A mix of emotions might flood over you as you finish examining the other score sections as well. Maybe you thought it went all right but didn't get anywhere near where you were scoring on your practice exams beforehand. What happened? You may be thinking to yourself. Trust me, I've been there twice. I took the MCAT three times with the ultimate finally being successful. Each time I learned more about myself and what I needed to do to achieve my goal score. Hi everyone, my name is Allie from MCAT Mastery. Today we'll be talking about the do's and don'ts of dealing with and preparing for a retake. Studying for the MCAT is an arduous journey on top of everything else you may be juggling. So first and foremost, remember to be kind to yourself and others while preparing to retake the exam. With that, let's dive into some of the things I learned from retaking the MCAT twice. Okay, so you just received your score. Now what? Well first, take some time to sit with how you feel. During this time, you should try to find outlets and resources to help relieve you from any negative thoughts or feelings. It can be very discouraging to get a score below what you expected. Utilizing meaningful, encouraging tools and resources will help you prepare for retaking and honestly is useful for any part of your study journey throughout the MCAT. Another part of this step is to make sure that you also seek support from family and friends who will help you through this time. Most importantly, remember that this exam does not define you as a person. The journey to get the score you desire and what you learn about yourself along the way does. Next, you'll want to sit down and review your study process, resources, tactics, etc. Basically everything that went into your studying. This is where you need to be very real and critical of yourself. There are a plethora of reflection questions you can start asking yourself to start tackling this step. I'll start by rattling off a few. What are the areas where you can improve? Were you taking practice after practice without ever reviewing your answers? Are there certain sections of the MCAT that you just found really difficult or unmanageable? during your study process? Or how is it that you allocate your time to study in the different sections? Maybe that needs to change a little bit. Do you need to be doing more flashcards? Were there terms on the exam where you just didn't know some of the terms? Or did it feel like you just choked on exam day? These are just a few to get you started, but you'll want to be very thorough with this part of the reflection process as it is essential to not repeat your previous mistakes. I think this is one of the most critical steps before even starting to restudy for the MCAT. I definitely didn't not go through this step hardly at all or definitely not thoroughly after my first MCAT. As a result, I approached studying the second time with many of the same habits and strategies, albeit while doing more practice. And I know this definitely impacted my score the second time around. When it came to the third retake, I definitely made sure to take a lot of time to really reflect on how can I improve, what do I need to improve on? Basically just kind of going through some of those questions that I mentioned before. All right, so the third big step I want to mention that will be necessary before you even start studying again for the MCAT will be to build up the motivation to study again. This can be a really big barrier, especially when it comes to retaking. I definitely experienced this and set up various resources like MCAT Mastery and YouTube to help me overcome it. Knowing that you are not alone and that others have dealt with similar challenges can be really comforting and encouraging. Some other tips to help you achieve this step of building up motivation is to remind yourself that this is just one hurdle to go over to achieve your dreams of becoming a physician. So now that you're ready to start studying again, what should you do next? How do you not make the same mistakes that you did before? The first step I might suggest would be to find something you can change and try different ways to accomplish this. Once you've figured out a few areas you can improve on, you'll want to seek out resources to support your improvement in these areas. It might take a lot of trial and error. This is why keeping track, either in a journal, Excel sheet, or Google Doc, is crucial. You can explore a variety of resources to see how they suggest you approach studying or maybe a certain topic or material. But remember that in the end, you are a unique individual who is going to learn your own way. Don't feel pressured to adhere to one method and even one method across multiple sections to see what works best for you. Personally, I ended up figuring out that my brain kind of works differently for different sections. So I ended up using 
a lot of different strategies across sections, but even within a section, let's say for chemistry and physics, I would sometimes approach chemistry a little bit different than I would the physics questions. Okay, so the second step in kind of making sure that you don't repeat some of your same mistakes is to try to keep a journal. Throughout this journal, you'll want to reflect on how you feel going into a study session during and after, if you can. You'll also be really surprised to see the trends in your mood, mindset, and how well you did while studying and maybe how you scored on practice exams or practice questions. For example, you might ask yourself, are you most productive after dinner? Did your study session last night go well after you ate? Or did you feel sluggish and tired during this time? Were you productive doing flashcards in the morning before work? Or maybe you might ask yourself, did something happen at work or school that had you in a certain mood going into the study session? Was that study session productive or not? Did you score well or not so well? These are some great questions to get you started on reflecting and analyzing on your journal. Furthermore, keeping a journal is essential to building a focused self-awareness. Now this can be really crucial come exam day, where maybe you show up and you're feeling a certain way, or you're just in a mood, or maybe even something physically related is going on. And throughout your study journey, you're likely to have stumbled upon one of these things, and Hopefully you would have been able to kind of work through it or tackle it or think of some tips and tricks to help you get over it for the next time. You've been through that already, you've successfully overcome that barrier and you can do it on exam day. The last thing I'll recommend to kind of help you be the most successful on your retake and to help you avoid any previous mistakes is definitely to build up the exam stamina. And so just as it's not recommended that you run a marathon with no previous training, you should also not jump into studying for eight hours a day your first day back when it comes to restudying. So I would say just starting small with maybe one to three hours and build up your study stamina as the days and weeks go on. This will be also really important in feeding into your motivation throughout the study journey and not overwhelm you too much right away. Another component of stamina is exam stamina, which is really crucial for this test. Make sure you also work on this and to really make sure that you try and schedule time for it too. At first it might look like getting just through one section of the exam. Then try adding another and maybe about one to two months out, you wanna be able to simulate test day for consecutive weeks to best build up your stamina. Now that we covered the bulk of the material, I'm gonna go a little bit into the do's and don'ts that I learned from my MCAT retake journey. So the first one. Do not force yourself to do hours of studying if they are not productive studying. Secondly, do take meaningful breaks. This means do not listen, watch, or go over MCAT material during your break. Do go for a walk, stretch, do some yoga, whatever you need to do to let your mind recoup and reset. Think of your brain like a muscle group, just like the rest of your body. Training it 24 seven will not yield the results you desire. Another one. Do not jump in too early. You really need to reflect and assess if and when it is feasible to retake. You do not wanna to have to retake it a third time like I had to myself. Do impose nights or days off with your friends or doing other activities to help you recharge. This is really, really important and something I definitely overlooked when I was retaking for my second exam. Okay, so the last do I will share with you is do be real and kind with yourself. Now, what do I mean by be real? That is, if you're doing research to work in school, be real with yourself in the sense that you seriously need to evaluate if you are able to dedicate a lot of mental and physical energy to all of them and then also the MCAT. As somebody who likes to think she can do just about anything and everything 24 seven, this is something that I seriously had to be really tough with myself in between my second and third exam, so for my second retake. All right, so what do I mean by be kind with yourself? Well, this process is gonna take a lot out of you. So make sure to give yourself breaks, go for walks, splurge on your favorite snacks. It's also really important to check in with yourself and make sure your stamina strengths staying strong. If not, find activities or people to help you along the way. To wrap up this video, I wanna stress one more time that it is okay to be taking the MCAT again. It is okay to feel discouraged at first. There are many people out there, like myself, who have been in your shoes before. Remember that there are steps you can take to be successful on your retake. It will take significant time and effort, 
but the payoff of achieving your dream score will make it very worthwhile. MCAT Mastery is an amazing resource to guide you through this retake journey as well. If you would like to gain some further inspiration, I suggest reading about other success stories on MCAT Mastery. There are many stories you can access for free in addition to their courses. That completes this video for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to take it one day at a time. You got this.